science lesson six basic two science lesson six we are still on diversity of matter and we are on our materials but today we are going to talk about matter the state of matter okay so by the end of the lesson you will recognize that substances exist in the states of matter what are they they are the solid the liquid and the gas those are the three states of matter secondly you should also describe the properties of each state that is the property of solid the property of liquids and the properties of gas and finally you give different different examples of these states so if it is gas you give me examples of gas liquid examples solid examples very good what did we talk about in our previous lesson we were on materials and we looked at some of the items that we can make from the properties of the materials we talked about hope you've not forgotten the properties so you said some are transparent others are opaque some are soft some are hard some are bendable some are rough others are smooth and we looked at some of the things we can get from these properties and I said some of them have two or more properties for them to be able to be what made into a new product good today we are going to talk about matter what is matter now let's look at our keywords for today our first keyword is matter matter is anything that has weight and occupy space anything that has weight and occupy space is known as matter a second keyword is compress compress what does it mean to press or to squeeze together to press or to squeeze together good in your class one lesson you came across the word matter so we learned that matter is what all things are made of so all the things that we have around us both the living and the non-living are in the state of matter different states of matter which are the solid the liquid and the what and the gas so all these states of matter have their unique physical properties that is why we are going to look at the properties of the states of matter so we said matter is made up of small particles called atom so every matter has a little small particles which is known as atom so the properties depend on the arrangement of the, the arrangement and the movement of these particles okay so the properties will tell eh, the arrangement of this word of these particles that make up the substance of the matter so the arrangement of the particles you have in that, sus the su that substance yes that will tell the kind of matter you are talking about okay look on your screen look at the things that are displayed over there look at them carefully we have three different things over there if you have those things around you try and feel it let's do a little experience of experiment over here try and touch it with your hand and see if you can hold it okay are you done the first one looks like air can you hold air can you 
you see a eh? no so that should tell you that it's another it's one form of matter the second one can you hold it can you feel it yes you can it's also another part of matter so the third one looks like liquid can you hold it you can hold it but it drips from your what from your hand that is also another form of matter okay now let us go to the properties of the three states of matter we are going to talk about the properties of each matter first we are taking the solid the solid the object you were able to hold in your hand and feel is the solid state of matter so what are it what are the properties of a solid substance they have fixed shape it is because of the fixed shape that made you hold the thing in your hand to be able to feel anything that has a fixed shape can enable you hold it properly so one property of a solid is that it has a fixed shape and they have fixed volume as well okay the second one is that you can pick them and hold in your hand anything that you pick and hold and feel and compress you can hold it and squeeze yes is a solid state of matter again solid can be hard some of them can be soft they are not always hard and then they cannot flow that is one thing that they cannot do that is one property about solid they cannot flow but you can feel and hold them of course solid can be compressed that means you can squeeze it or hold it very good what are some of the examples i'm sure by now you will have some of the examples in your mind give me some of the examples book chalk stone table anything you can feel and touch are examples of solid hope you can see some of the examples on your screens very good now let's move on to the second state of matter which is liquid yes the little experiment you did by feeling those three items which one looks like the one that can flow is a liquid yes that is one state of matter have you noticed that some of the things cannot be picked up so others some of the things cannot be picked up so the things that can be picked up are what solid uh, the things that you cannot pick up they are in different form so this one the other one that you can pick up you can hold but it starts flowing is the liquid form what are the properties liquids can flow liquids can flow if they can flow that means they can what spill that means little thing you do to it they will what they will pour on the floor so you always have to what put them together in a container so that they will not spill containers like bottles cups buckets and many others but if you fetch them in your hand they will flow by the time you see the water is finished in your hand <laughs> That is one property of liquids. Okay, what then? If they can flow, you can pour them. Yes, you can pour them from container to containers. So, liquids can be poured. This is because they flow. Anything that flows can be poured. Liquids have fixed shape. They also have fixed shape. That means any container that you pour them into, they take the shape of that container. So it becomes fixed. But they can never, they can't they can be compressed so much. So they are compressed slightly. Let's say water 
Can you press water to go down? No, 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 no. But you can feel it to the brain. That is what I'm talking about. So we've looked at the properties of liquid too. Look at the examples. Hope you can see the pictures over there. All liquids, all anything that is watery or anything that can flow is in this state known as liquid. The kerosene, the juice, the oil, the milk, of course water is number one. Looking at the three things I ask you to observe closely and even touch if you have them at home. Now, there are things around us which we can see, but we cannot touch or feel. Have you observed that? Okay, like the smoke. Have you ever seen smoke before? And water vapor. Yes, those ones you can see them, but you can't touch them. Okay, there are some too, you can see them, but you cannot feel them. Some too, you cannot what? See them, but you feel them around you. Example is the air. The air we have around. You can't see it, you can't touch it. But you can what? Feel it on your body that the air is blowing. Yes, that kind of state is known as a gas. They are the gases. So what are the properties of gases? Gases have no fixed volume or fixed shape. For them, they flow wherever there's an open space. They flow. They flow in any open space. But you can compress them in a container. Compress them in a container. When you do that, they can be what? They can take the shape of that container. But the moment they have a little space to move out, they start flowing out of it. An example is the gas cylinders we have in our homes. That's been filled with gas. Okay. So gas can spread out to fill any container that they are in. So the gas has been what? Put in a cylinder so that it cannot flow easily. Okay. What again? We can't see gas, but we can feel it. Some of them you see, but you can't touch. Those are the what? The properties of gas. Let's look at the examples. When you blow air into a what? A balloon. You see the balloon becoming big. But you can't see what is making it big. That is the gas in the balloon. And if you try to what? Release the air from the balloon a bit, you feel it. You feel the air coming out. That is what I'm talking about. So, balloons, air trapped in balloons are examples of what? Gases. They are telling us that gas exists, substances exist in the what? In the gas form. You can also see water vapor, steam coming out from water. When you are boiling water, the kettle, when you boil kettle, sorry, when you boil water in a kettle, you see the water vapor coming out from the what? From the kettle. That is also an example of gas. Good. What again? Smoke. When you see a smoke, you can see it, but you can't touch it. It's also an example of gas. Okay, children. We've talked a lot about the three states of matter. What are the states? We have the solid, the liquid, and the gas. We looked at some of the properties of the, the states. Can you remember some of them? Some of them have fixed shape. Others don't. Some flow easily. 
Some can be poured, others cannot. Some you can hold them and touch them. Others you feel it on your body. Those are the properties of the state of matter. We looked at the examples too. Okay, now that you are at home, try and observe the things around you very well and closely and look out for this state of matter that we have discussed today. You'll find them around you. There are plenty around you. Be inquisitive a bit and look out for them. List them in your daughters. When you come on a Zoom, we'll discuss them. Until then, bye-bye.